Good morning. It's Thursday, September 17th, 2020, and welcome to Socially Squared's Director's Cut, where I'll be sharing commentary on uh, content that we produce at Sociality Squared and articles and trends on other social media marketing. Uh, it's been since the end of July. Um, I took a break off uh, for August, and if you notice, uh, I've got a different background, which I'll mention uh, why in a few minutes. Um, today's main topic is uh, we're going to be talking about the importance of the debrief, uh, so stay tuned. Uh, thank you for joining. I know there is so much going on in the world right now. Yesterday I had a client call push back because he's outside of LA and woke up to firefighters um, having him evacuate his house. So my heart and thinking so much about everyone on the West Coast right now dealing with the, the wildfires, the smoke, and the evacuations. Um, I can't believe it's already September 17th and I was updating my notes. Um, we're still in the middle of a pandemic and we're still continuing to lose way too many people um, to the coronavirus. So um, still disrupting our lives and I know every parent out there uh, has more on their plate than normal and a lot to think about with school and everything. So my heart is with your heart and especially with the black community, which continues to see injustices. Um, and here at Social Squared, I've said this and I will continue to say this, we do not want business to return to normal. Uh, we want to create a better standard, one rooted in anti-racism and radical inclusion and equity. Uh, so we're working towards that um, through our core business practices that we do <clears throat> and working with value aligned clients and in the content that we produce through them to create a positive impact. Um, and one thing uh, that I wanted to encourage everyone to do and that I will probably say every broadcast between now and the election is if you haven't registered to vote, I encourage you to do so. Um, I saw a great quote from John Lewis on Instagram the other day the vote is the most powerful, nonviolent change agent you have in a democratic society. Um, and this is something, even though I put a pause on um, the Facebook Lives for the month of August and I, a little bit of the beginning of September, my Mac crashed, uh, which I'm still waiting for my new one. Um, but typically, you know, I try not to mix politics too much with sociality squared because we really do um, value diversity of thought and just diversity in the broadest sense of the word, um, embracing you know something that's different uh, from from yourself. Um, and we work with clients from every political spectrum and uh, that don't even identify with politics um, and everything in between. Uh, and we we really do value um, you know. Uh, debate in that sense um, and coming to the table with different different perspectives. Um, however, this year um, is such an important year that I announced in August that um, as a company, Sociality Squared is endorsing Joe Biden and Kamala Harris for president and vice president. And with everything that's happening, it's just too important not to. And we believe, and we're doing this because we believe in the possibility of true equity and equality in, American, uh, in America. And lives are on the line. So I won't go too much further into it and open up that can of worms, but I encourage you to vote. I encourage you to uh, request your mail-in ballots, uh, learn the system for your state, uh, for me, I'm going to, I've already requested my mail-in ballot, and I'm going to hand deliver it um, uh, to the polls uh, as soon as I can. Uh, but whatever it is for your state, learn it, vote, vote early, and vote as securely as possible. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Helen Todd, co-founder and CEO 
Um, and if you're new to Sociality Squared, we're a social media agency who understands the magic of people coming together around what they value and love. And clients partner with us to grow their businesses and know that we always remember behind every screen is a person. So after this video uh, goes live, or ends the recording, I'll put some links uh, below of how you can connect. Actually, there's some links now, how you can connect with Sociality Squared and myself, and then I'll add some extra links for a few of the news pieces that we'll be covering. And so today I'll cover a few S2 news, um, the main topic of the importance of the debrief, a little social media news, and end, we always like to end on a good note, uh, so some inspiration. Um, and I'm going to try to keep this to 30 minutes. This is a little bit of a new time, so 7.30 to 8 a.m. Um, the biggest news uh, is you might have noticed from when I ended in July, there's a new background. Uh, I actually moved from New York City uh, to Cincinnati, Ohio. And because of that, uh, Sociality Squared as head headquarters also moved from New York City to Cincinnati, Ohio. So the company was founded in New York City in 2010. I was there, you know, 11 years. Um, New York City is near and dear to my heart. Um, but in this moment in time, uh, the idea of more space, a yard, and being closer to family kind of won. Um, so packed up everything. It was, I think I underestimated what the move from across the country would be. And in the middle of it, my, my Mac crashed. So I'm uh, waiting for a new Mac. And also that's one reason why this broadcast didn't uh, start last week uh, as we originally planned. Um, but I'm super excited to be here in Cincinnati. Um, I don't plan on leaving too much of my, from uh, my new house uh, until 2021, uh, but I went to college here at Xavier University and uh, two other team members from the Sociality Squared team are here. Uh, Christy is kind of my right-hand woman and is an amazing social media marketer and account executive. Um, and then Amy Crowley, who is a content strategist and does a lot of our PR um, exposure too. Um, so it's good, and we have uh, some clients here. Um, so it's good, it's good to be in Cincinnati, and I'm looking forward to reconnecting uh, with old friends from Xavier and, and meeting new people too. And all the while, I'm still, uh, you know, since everything's virtual, still very much uh, part of uh, my New York City uh, networking groups and presence. And when I feel comfortable flying, I'll definitely be uh, never too far from, from New York City for sure. Um, so that's the big news. Social Iceberg has new headquarters in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, so if you're in the area, uh, I'd love to connect, start with a Zoom or maybe a socially distanced coffee. So we'll see. Um, but do reach out. Um, the other uh, news is Brandemonium, which it's funny, I, uh, Brandemonium, this is probably its fourth or fifth year uh, that's taken place, and I've been part of the conference um, since day one as kind of an advisor. We helped them with social media marketing one year, and I've spoken every year at the conference um, that's here in Cincinnati, which is the branding capital of the world, or it's kind of one of the claims since uh, branding uh, has a lot of history with P&G in Cincinnati. So uh, for the past couple of years, I've always flown into to Cincinnati uh, to speak and participate in the conference. This year, it's vir I'm like actually living here in Cincinnati and it's, it's virtual. Um, but I'm excited to be part of the conference again. Um, it's taking place October 7th and 8th and I'm speaking on October 8th from 11.45 to 12.15. And this year, the conference is all about kind of voice and audio and uh, sonic and stuff. So my topic will be the future of voice and marketing, where I'll talk about some key trends that are happening that are both inspiring and practical. Um, I don't think I've mentioned him on this broadcast. Maybe I have. But like I'm a huge like fan of Reaps One. He's a friend that I met through Nokia Bell Labs. Um, but... I immediately thought of him um, when um, 
Bill, the one of the co-founders, reached out to me. Um, I mean, you've got he's got scientists like studying his voice because he's pushed it further than any human that's been studied before. And he's a beatboxer, but also doing some really interesting things. He spoke at Davos. So I'll talk about, you know, what he's doing, how he's like collaborating with AI and kind of what that means for implications for marketers too. Um, and then uh, I guess the, the fall series uh, for our director's cut um, is here and uh, we'll be here for the fall. Probably we'll take, not probably, I'll take the winter off too. Um, but do, if you haven't uh, liked our page on Facebook yet, uh, do that and you'll get notifications when I go live. And it will be every Thursday morning uh, from 7.30 to 8 a.m. For, for our new time. Okay, so today's key topic, the importance of the debrief. Um, it's not quite the sexiest title for uh, the launch of uh, uh, the director's cut for the fall. Um, but it's really important and it's kind of top of mind. Uh, so I've actually been in Cincinnati a few weeks and was kind of laying low. And we have uh, a new client project um, or a big client launch project, I should say, that's kind of in the middle of moving, also been taking up a lot of time. And last week, uh, last Tuesday, I produced a social first video and photography shoot all back in New York City. Um, part of me kind of wish I had was there, so I was having a little bit of FOMO, um, to be honest. And um, But technology is amazing, and even though it would pro probably have been a little bit smoother if I was there in person, I did it all virtually. Um, and the, uh, the on-person producer, they had cameras set up so I could see what the camera was seeing uh, remotely. I interviewed a few people, which I can't tell you what it is yet, but uh, once the content gets live, um, we'll share that with you. Um, so, and I'll, and I'll go into more detail kind of on remote production because we're actually gonna do another one with a partner in Portland coming up. Um, but you can uh, produce entire photo and video shoots remotely uh, using technology, which, which is amazing. Um, but one of the more important things I want to talk to you about today is just the importance of the debrief. And we do this at Sociality Squared pretty much for everything. Uh, for any big production uh, like Tuesdays, and we literally had uh, two studios with a photographer and a videographer shooting, and then after lunch they switched. So we got a lot of content in one day in both video and photography. Uh, formats. Um, but after every big production or after every promotion, a giveaway, um, a sweepstakes, and really it's, it's kind of what we do in our monthly reports too, is that we do a brain dump um, while it's super fresh. We did, we've done this for Brandemonium when um, uh, we managed their social media and their uh, volunteer program one year. While it's super fresh, like do a brain dump of everyone on the team of what worked, what didn't work, um, what are our learnings that we can take with us for next time. Um, and then we kind of just have this like collective library where we're constantly learning, uh, iterating, and um, improving for the next time. Um, so we have like, goodness, it's been like 10 years now because <laughs> this is our 10 year anniversary this year. Um, you, you have so many lessons learned and, you know, social, there's always new things coming with, you know, the coronavirus. We're all working virtually. Uh, I helped, you know, with a virtual conference back in March, which was totally new, at least for everyone involved in that project. Um, so the, the debrief is just so important. So I encourage, um, anyone I mean, after this move, <laughs> kind of under, underestimated it, you know, what was the, the good and the bad from the move to, um, to, to after a small or a big project is to take some time right afterwards to do a brain dump of what worked well, uh, what didn't work, where is there room for improvement, um, put it on paper and file it away so that you can reference it for next time. Um, 
it was just a good practice. And we do this with our reporting too. Um, we are constantly learning, iterating, and improving and optimizing. So if you haven't done the debrief or you know of it and you don't do it on a regular basis, I highly encourage you uh, to embrace the debrief. Um, they're great tools for um, improvement. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left or so. I'm, I'm gonna try to stick to 30 minutes this season. Um, and to be honest, um, for the news section, this past couple weeks has been very much moving, getting things set up and um, this client project. And so I haven't uh, done as a big of a deep dive as I usually do in following the ins and outs of, uh, of the industry news as possible. Um, but I did want to point out two things for today and I'll go into more. I mean, there's a lot that has happened uh, since uh, the end of July. Um, but two things I want to point out today. Uh, yesterday, uh, Facebook had their Connect conference, which they did all virtually. And um, this is their, vir not <laughs> you can hear uh, the street. Um, it's their virtual reality and AR um, conference. And they had three, three announcements, um, their Facebook uh, reality labs, uh, they're introducing smart glasses, and then they introduced a new or like an upgraded VR headset, the Quest 2. Um, what was interesting with the, the, the glasses, the smart glasses, is it's very, it's not like Snapchat where the camera or like the glasses are a camera to capture video and stream. It's more like glasses are um, a seamless interface where you can see through and then have like AR, um, you know, kind of holographic looking things overlaying reality in kind of a seamless classic looking way. Um, they didn't put a te like a, a timeline or a date when that's happening, but it's definitely like the future is, is coming. We already use AR through our Snapchat filters, our Instagram filters. Um, all the time. So these things are just going to be blending. And we, we create like Instagram stickers here at Socialize Squared and dabble with some of this. Um, but I one reason why I pay attention to it is kind of like a litmus test of what's to come and what we should be paying attention to and should we bring this to our brands. Um, so I always, you know, try to pay as close attention to possible as um, for upcoming trends. And Facebook, when it comes to virtual reality, like their announcement of Oculus, like reinvigorated the entire virtual reality um, industry and has like pushed it forward. Um, so while Facebook, and I will talk about this more in this broadcast, has many flaws and many things to fix um, in a lot of ways, you know, over the course of my career in social media and marketing, it's also served for me as kind of a litmus test of where trends are going. Um, so VR, AR, I know like VR got a lot of like um, initial like uh, talk and then kind of died down like too early. It's not really going to come. I still think VR is going to, um, going to have a big presence with us. And one of the words, I just watched the, the introduction that Zuckerberg did yesterday. Um, he talks about the, the need for presence and how like video is different than in person, but VR, you have more of a sense of presence because you have a, a shared sense of space. Um, there's companies like Nokia Bell Labs that are working on like being able to replicate in-person presence virtually. Um, I, I'm kind of like the jury's still out on that one because, you know, energetically, it's going to be really hard to replicate in person uh, energy shared between two people. Um, but we'll see. Um, but definitely keep your eye out for, you know, announcements on these glasses in the future and virtual reality. Um, and I'd be curious, you know, if you uh, use virtual reality at all. Uh, I was talking with some friends last night. And uh, we all want to order the new headset and meet up in some of the virtual reality, like I think it's the venue spaces to, to hang out together. 
because, you know, everyone's more spread out and staying more at home now. Um, the other piece of news, um, I actually listened to this on my drive from New York City to uh, Cincinnati. Um, a friend shared and recommended it is um, Jack Dorsey, who's the co-founder of Twitter, did an interview with NPR on um, kind of it's the mistakes that Twitter has made. And it, it was good. I, I appreciated the, the guy who interviewed him. He didn't hold much back on the questions, um, but they kind of, they talked a lot of, uh, on a lot of topics, you know, relevant today on misinformation, polarization, um, what's happening in the industry. Um, so it, it, it was interesting and I recommend it. Um, and one of the things that I appreciated that Jack said is that as an industry, um, you know, there needs to be more regulation. So he agreed with that, which I agree with. And he also said that, you know, this whole algorithm, uh, transpa- or algorithms right now are not transparent. It's this black box and that that's an industry wide pr- uh, problem. So it was really good to hear, you know, one of the co-founders of and CEOs of these big platforms to say that because these conversations need to happen and uh, change needs to happen. Um, so I recommend that. And Twitter, you know, some people say that Twitter has done a better job in addressing these issues of misinformation and kind of taking down posts that violate the terms of service from Trump. And in some ways they have kind of led, led that, um, but I don't want to give them too much credit because they also have a whole long list of issues. Um, they're probably in some ways doing a little bit better job than Facebook. Um, but yeah, they, all of these social platforms have a long list of issues that need to be fixed. Um, so I'm not going to give anyone too many gold stars, but I did really appreciate the, um, the interview and where he was thinking um, and where he was saying that the industry should go. Cause I agreed with all of those things. Um, and then uh, for the inspiration, um, so I've been uh, spending a lot of time on Pinterest. Um, uh, it's kind of my way to unwind and think about uh, the house and have fun. Um, uh, cause this is also going to be a meeting place for sociality squared. Uh, it's, uh, in addition to, uh, my home, uh, I think it's kind of like most people are, uh, working from home. I'm, uh, living from work, uh, now, um, cause this is actually a commercial property, uh, that I'm living from, but it's, it's very cool. Like, uh, old house, like shaker house from, um, like it was listed as you know built in the 1900 or like early 1900s but it's really probably built in like the 1830s or 1850s um so it's a very cool house and i went to buy a couch and i wanted a red couch uh for the more formal living area and the lady behind the counter was like are you sure you want a red couch like that is a commitment maybe you'll go with like uh, a beige couch or a neutral tone and then add pillows and throws so you're not as committed I was like no no was like um do you know Diana Vreeland you know her her uh, apartment in New York City and she hadn't heard of it so I was like uh, what's my inspiration I've been looking at Diana Vreeland's apartment um and if you don't know who she is she um was the editor of Vogue for many years and um, forget what's the, and she has a a great uh, documentary about her, but um, let's see, she was Harper's Bazaar 1936 to 1962 and Vogue editor from 1962 to 1971. And um, she just had this like larger than life and she brought like these, like very kind of fantastical, um, like big spreads and, um, 
fantasy to fashion and she'd fly to these exotic locations and just go over the top like she she really changed um the magazine and fashion industry with the this like vision that she had in her apartment in new york city not that i want anything exactly like this but she has this like over the top like red and she told her designer famously like i want my apartment to look like a garden a garden from hell um so it's crazy over the top um so it inspired me to get red couches um and just to have kind of fun with the space um and it, in looking at and talking to a you know a few different furniture places it seems like everyone not everyone, but a lot of people are renting, uh, reno not renovating, well, renovating and kind of redecorating. And since we're all spending so much time at home, um, kind of make these are sanctuaries and retreats. So I'm having a little bit of fun uh, with mine, uh, even though the furniture won't be here for a while. Um, uh, but, you know, inspiration comes from many different places. So I hope everyone, you know, whatever your space is that, um, whether you have fun with it, but it's kind of feels like home and is a wonderful space that you enjoy to be in uh, since we are spending so much more time at home. And uh, she had uh, one quote uh, that I also like that there's only one very good life and that's the life you know you want and you make it yourself. Um, and the, the documentary, um, I think it's Diana Vreeland, The Eye Must Travel. Um, so it's, it's a really interesting look into her world, which is one of these like, you know, fantastical worlds that, that she really invented for herself. Um, so that's the first broadcast for the fall. So thank you for joining, especially if you stayed to the very end and watched it through. Um, like this page if you haven't already, so you get notifications when I go live again. And I will be back next week at 7.30 to 8 a.m. East Coast time. And also, if you haven't signed up for our newsletter, please do. Um, uh, and also, you know, do sign up for Brandemonium um, for when I'll be speaking in October. So thank you. Stay safe. Stay vigilant. Uh, sign up to vote or register to vote as well. All right. Thanks.